This morning in the Roadshow Kitchen, we are not going to be sharing a recipe here in the Roadshow Kitchen, so the KCC and E Kitchen is going to be actually pretty spotless today. Instead, we are heading down by the city to the city by the sea, where Ashley is this morning with a pretty great. Uh, pretty great uh, assignment this morning at the Newport Wine and Food Fest. Hey, hey, Ashley. Hi, Will. Good morning. That's right. So we took our kitchen on the road today here to the Newport Mansions Wine and Food Festival. And we have a whole kitchen set up here where we're going to make today's recipe. I have Chef John Liddell from Monogram here. And of course, we all know John Rodman from the Newport Mansions here with me this morning as well. Good morning, guys. Good morning, Good morning Ashley. Thank you so much for hosting us today here in this fabulous kitchen. John, tell us why we're here today. Well, can you believe it's our 14th season at the Newport Mansions Wine and Food Festival? And and we've got a bunch of returning fans of the festival this year. Chateau Desclan has come back. Um, we have some new, really interesting things. Wines of Israel is here. But the people that we are really, really pleased to have here this morning is Monogram because they have provided all of the equipment, not just for today, the Monogram Chef stage is where all the cooking demonstrations are going to happen, and uh, Monogram is one of those important groups, one of those important companies that helps make something like this possible. This is so cool, this whole setup here. I mean, this is a full working kitchen. Chef, what are we going to be making today? Today, I'm so happy to bring you one of my favorite fall dishes, a little butternut squash orzo done risotto style. So taking something that's really difficult to make yeah. and just cutting the time in half. Also going to do a bourbon brown butter sauce and then an apple glazed uh, pork chop. So I think we'll be and hands. it already smells so good in here. So we're going to get cooking in just a little bit. We're going to let you hold off for now. John, tell us a little bit more about the weekend and what people who are coming here can expect to see from these demonstrations and from everything you have going on. So the grand tastings are really the heart of the weekend. Uh, we have a couple of evening events, which unfortunately for this year are sold out. But we have tickets for the Sunday Grand Tasting. And so if you want to get a ticket to the Grand Tasting on Sunday, you just go to newportmansions.org. But the Grand Tasting, as I said, as the heart of the event has uh, this fabulous chef stage. We have a grill stage, um, a, a lot of really fascinating things with uh, oysters and wine combinations. So it's really a feast for the palate in all kinds of ways. And as I said, it's still, there's an opportunity for people to come and join us. Which is great. And this is such a popular event. We know that from year to year. What do you think it is about this event that makes it so appealing for everyone? I know people look forward to it all year long. Well. I think the real appeal is the great diversity because there are all kinds of fabulous wines from around the world. We have some very carefully selected spirits that are part of the mix. We have some fabulous food purveyors, so there are uh, incredible chefs. And it is that experience of being right here on the ocean in the last golden weekend of summer. <laughs> oh, it is, and it's going to be a beautiful weekend. The weather is fantastic. So we are going to get cooking in just a few minutes out here in our monogram kitchen, but for now, back to you in studio. Hi, Brendan. Good morning. You know, you guys are having way too much fun back there in the studio. You better you better settle down a little bit. The fun is happening out here at the Newport Mansions Wine and Food Festival, and we are getting cooking with Chef John, and it smells fantastic, Chef. What are we doing right now? We're doing a lot right now, actually. We just have this really nice butternut squash in here, just sautéing down, starting to break down with just a little bit of garlic, and do you smell that other yes, thing? Yes, Sage. I, oh. I'm cheating because I already said it smells so good. What is it? Because I don't know anything. Whether you're cooking with it or just <laughs> put it in a pot of water, Yes. And let it boil and you get yes. the aromatics. It it's so, so good. Great. It's so nice it for the fall, nice, too. I was going to say that nice fall smell to it. And now this is a very fancy Check refrigerator this out. behind us. Yeah. 30 inch column refrigerator, air filtration, LED lit shelves. The list goes on this and on. This is beautiful. There is nothing else like this out there in the marketplace. If you want the biggest and the best, you go with this. Yeah. And it blended right in. We thought we didn't even know that this was a refrigerator the whole time. You know, that's the mark of luxury when you can really hide your appliances yes. these days behind panels. It's so chic. It's amazing. So let's set these pork chops okay, down here. Perfect. What I made here is a little smoky apple water. So this is just fresh apple cider. Now I'm from northern Michigan, so I tend to bring a little bit of my childhood like into it. my dishes. I like it. So we make this quick brine. Okay. And you really want to leave this in there for about 45 minutes maybe right. and just kind of let those flavors come together. Now what, what was in it? We've got a little bit of cayenne. We've got some fresh apple cider. Okay. We've got a little bit of olive oil. 
oil in there, um, a little bit of smoked paprika. I actually cut the paprika down though because I'm going to add smoke to this dish in a different way later how. on. So we'll let these All pork right. chops kind of brine Let's out over there. For you guys. Yeah. Here. So this is one of my other favorite things from Northern Michigan. This is applewood smoked butter made by an artisan up there, small company. So tell us about that. What's the smokiness? You know, it's cold smoked. You know, you don't have to have heat once really? the food is uh, uh, around the smoke. So it goes through trays and chambers of ice. And as the smoke comes up and no plumes way. up, it cools off. And this little packet of butter sits there on the top and just absorbs all of that flavor. Wow, and you can smell it. We were, oh. we were looking at everything earlier and smelling it, and it just smells Fantastic. It's very now, intense. Now, what type of a flavor will that butter bring to this dish? You know, with the apple cider vinegars that we're using and just the natural pork flavor, some of the sweetness out of the butternut squash, uh, it really all melds together nicely. But what really brings the whole dish together is the induction cooktop we're on yes. right now. I'd right, really right. like to tell I you a couple things. I'm telling you, I know nothing. Tell me about this. You know, and, and I understand after knowing Ashley just for a few <laughs> minutes now that she is just an amazing chef. So, yes, it's um, a, let's all pretend that's true. And whether we're a great chef, or just starting out, induction cooking is where you want to live. Okay. It cooks five times faster than gas. This pan right now, I just crank yeah, the heat it. up. That smoked butter, $12 a pound, okay? So yes. you can't go wrong <laughs> no with that. Up. <laughs> that smoked butter um, is going to come up to 450 degrees, start to get to 500 degrees of temperature in only about 45 seconds. That's incredible. All right, so we're going to get this going, you guys, and we'll finish this up in the next hit. You do not want to miss it. We have a lot of trips up our sweet back to you. In the kitchen this morning, we have taken our kitchen on the road and we are live at the Newport Mansions Wine and Food Festival here in their beautiful monogram kitchen with Chef John. Chef, what are we doing now? We're going to finish off the pork chop in the oven? Well, I think mostly we're having fun. Yes, right? we are. We're having we definitely fun. Are when you're having in the kitchen fun. and you're Absolutely. cooking with monogram, you're always having a good and time. And certainly you are having a great time because you have some fancy tools here. Look at that. You know, you don't need all of these creature comforts, but it sure makes cooking yes. a lot more elevated. And I at monogram. Might if I had some of this. You might, you might. And when you do cook with monogram, it's always elevated. It's always easier. You have so many creature comforts yeah. built into our appliances that it just, it makes the whole experience that much, that much more it luxurious. Really is yeah. making it so fun for us. And like you were saying, everything's cooking quickly. It's cooking easily. So what are we doing now? Well, now we're working on our induction cooktop again, okay. which is the appliance you want to cook on if you like to make a mess while you're cooking. Okay, Because perfect. you can literally just be be a messy chef, and while you're cooking, you just clean as you go. This is amazing. You know what? This else? is amazing. If you're really messy, you just leave that towel down right Wait. there, and you cook right through the towel. Check that Are you out. Serious? So let's add a little heavy cream in there. Use your cooktop as your countertop now too. Oh Salt my gosh. and pepper. Never all makes it in there. Little mess, not a big <laughs> this deal. This is what Smoke my paprika. cooktop at home looks like. Cracked red pepper, <laughs> and a little grating of fresh parmesan in there. Oh my and this is really going to set our pork dish off nicely. Okay, and this what? is a great fall dish, right? Oh, I'm a huge outdoorsman. Spend most of my fall out in the woods. And these flavors, these smells are really what symbolizes fall. The things that are coming out of our gardens right now, the things that, you know, we've been waiting to mature, yeah. the root vegetables. Yeah, that's what we want to be cooking on right now. Chef John, I'm realizing you and I could not be more different as the, the uh, segment continues to go on between your cooking skills and your outdoorsman <laughs> skills. I am really learning a lot this morning. Well, we, would, we would have a great conversation about yes. things neither of us know anything yes, about. Yes, right? absolutely. We're learning a lot. <laughs> so we're going to finish this just with a little bit of chicken stock in there. Okay. Already got the salt and pepper and that's pretty much All right, done. now this is coming together really, really quickly for people who are cooking at home. I think they're often scared of a dish like this because they're scared of overcooking it, undercooking it. You're making it look pretty easy. Yeah, and, and for all those reasons, you're right. They should be scared because risotto <laughs> is something that's really tough to make. You yeah. got to sit there and stir for 30 minutes until your wrist gets tired. Yeah. With the or, or with um, orzo here, we kind of cut out a lot of those steps okay. and we're still stirring and incorporating but and cooking. But you're getting that same similar kind of a texture it looks You like. sure are. You're getting that consistency. Orzo is the pasta rice, you know? It's yeah. pasta, but it's shaped like rice. So you still get those good carbs. Okay. We don't have to go gluten-free yeah. on this one, yeah. but we could. Not today. Not you today. can do this same dish if you do need to go gluten-free and just replace it with rice. All right. And you still got a great dish. Looks great. So let's grab that out of the yes. oven here. That should just about be finished up. Wow. That, that did brown up on the top. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm surprised yeah, for some reason. Yeah. I don't really know. Well, you know, I always take all did the credit. Did exactly what you said it would do. Well, I take the credit, but it's really yes. the, the oh, appliances. Yeah, no, I, I, think, I think there's a little skill involved there. Just well. a touch, maybe. 
So we'll grab this pork chop, move that nice butter out of the way. Oh Beautiful. my gosh. Now tell us when somebody's cooking at home and they're cooking pork. Pork's another thing people are scared of. What should they be looking for when it's done? First of all, forget everything you know about pork. Okay. All right. Don't even think that like it has to be shoe leather. Okay. Growing up we that ate shoe leather exactly pork. That is exactly what I do with my pork. It does not need to be that way anymore. The reasons we overcooked pork was different bacteria. They're not right. in our pork stock anymore. Oh, okay. So you can actually eat pork just like this. This is what I would call for most consumers well, an acceptable level of doneness here. Yeah. More of like a medium. Okay. Not quite medium right. well. That's Myself, good. I'm okay with medium. Okay. You know, nice You're little. You're not going to get sick. I'm not going to get right. sick as long as it's been in good hands and of uh, course cooked on good appliances you're going to be just fine so a little bit of that burnt butter bourbon sauce on there gorgeous. just a little bit because there's so many flavors in there already and we'll top it off with just some charred brussels sprouts like that and i think you know what grab a glass of wine yeah. grab let's, a friend to enjoy it with to a beautiful dish a beautiful fall day and the newport mansions wine and food festival hey thanks for having us great job thank you Here's to you guys. guys doesn't get better than this back to you